My story begins in London. You'll find Artronics Media in Covent Garden, around the corner from the Royal Opera House on Hanover Street. It's a graphic design firm founded by an artist, Mark Drake. The work Mark and his fellow artists do there is really quite remarkable. And despite the fact that I've never had the pleasure of meeting Mark Drake, I feel like I know him. The Artronics operation got off to a rough start. It's rumored that Mark sold the appliances from his flat to keep Artronics in the black. Artronics has grown steadily over the last three years. The last six months have been particularly good. Today, Mark's analyzing his cash flow statements, looking to see if he can add staff, computers, whatever he thinks he needs to keep Artronics growing. I'm looking at his cash flow as well. As the senior corporate loan officer here at the London office of Atlas Worldwide Bank, it's my job to keep an eye on Mr. Drake's business. After all, we know our customers best. Mark's been an Atlas customer since he came to us for his startup loan. And because he's expanding, I sent him a low interest loan offer. The application came back yesterday. That's when I discovered the overdue credit card. I rang him up about the matter. He said, Mr. Walker, I don't have a personal credit card account with Atlas Worldwide. And that's why I sent you the suspicious activity report. Thanks, Robert. Those details are going to be helpful. Do we know anything about who may have applied for this credit card? We don't know exactly who it is, Robert, but we are taking this very seriously. We've traced all the credit card transactions issued to Mark's illegitimate card, and they're mostly in the San Francisco region. Now, there's a lot of activity on this one card. Just this morning, it was used at a home decor. Unfortunately, it's consistent with the other patterns we're seeing. Other patterns? Well, we've uncovered over 470 stolen identities from your London office. And here's the key. For every invalid credit card we've identified, there's a legitimate commercial loan connected to the name on the card. Without the customer knowing. Exactly. Now we're now looking at the signatures on both the commercial loan and the credit card. If they don't match, we look at the date the card was issued and the region where the transactions are being made. And we can then determine if we need to raise a flag on the card. Now to put a stop to all this, the bank changed its business processes last week to check all incoming credit card applications against existing corporate loans. Why didn't we realize this sooner? The systems weren't integrated. And when the credit card was issued to Mark in the US, we couldn't see that he already had a loan in the UK with a different signature. In any case, you'll see we put a stop on the credit card. Mr. Drake will be notified immediately if he hasn't been already. I see the cancellation. I also see the card was approved by the private labels team, credit card division in San Jose. Yes, well now we have a complete view of our customer accounts no matter where in the world the activity occurs. Oh, you know, something just happened in my system. Another credit card application was flagged. Robert, you're going to have to excuse me. I've got to track this. Peter Holt, San Jose Credit Card Division. Hi, Peter. This is Jordan Mills in the fraud unit at headquarters. I'm investigating a number of stolen identities. Jordan, sure. I'm looking at the fraud alerts now. The identities were stolen from the London office. Now, I'm looking for the original applications for the credit card accounts listed in the alerts. Can you tell me who approved and issued them? London, huh? That info's gonna be a problem. These applications are over six months old and the data's been archived. You know, I just heard about backup tapes stolen from trucks in transit. I wonder if that has anything to do with these stolen identities. I doubt that has anything to do with this. Regardless, all the info on the tape is encrypted. It can't be seen. Peter, 
Gilbert won't release the backup tapes to us. Excuse me, Jordan. Uh, Charlotte, this is Jordan Mills from the Fraud Division. I'm sorry. I was just telling Peter that I'm having trouble locating the backup tapes. Uh, so Charlotte says that maybe there could be a problem in court. I got that. But what I don't get is why you are requesting the backup tapes. Just trying to help you speed the process along. Trying to get you that information. Well, don't bother yourself with that. We have all the data online here. I have the corporate IT guys plenty busy already. We flagged a credit card application that was approved by your division a few hours ago. Could you or Charlotte look that one up for me? Sure. I've got to take this conference. All right, please review that approval and send me the details. Jordan Mills, fraud unit. Hi, Jordan. I am Frank Shim at the Singapore National Bank, one of your correspondent banks. I see that you uploaded some information about stolen identities. Yes, that is correct. We have had a number of fraudulent credit cards opened up under those names. Now, do you have some information about this? Yes. It appears that the stolen identities being used to open up fraudulent credit cards at your bank have also been used to open up accounts at my bank. Each of these accounts has had high volumes of wire transfers recently. Indeed, I see the system alert now. We need to figure out where the money is coming from and where it's going to. The money seems to be going all over. Uh, Panama, the Cayman Islands, the Isle of Man. We have isolated several patterns in the data and are monitoring the transactions closely as they come in. It looks like to us that these accounts may be alias accounts that are up to no good. Your information validates our theory. Okay, this is more serious than I thought. We do have one name that we have been able to link some of the funds to. It looks like he's been using the same PIN number for all his accounts. His name is William Carrera. I'm pinging my colleague, Fred Tanner, to join our conference. He can help us get additional information quickly. After receiving your alerts, we did a little research on Carrera. I have just uploaded video footage we have when he was at an ATM in Panama. I also attached a few check images with his handwriting on them. Fred, we need any information you have on William Carrera. Of course you do. I was just about to eat my sandwich, and I thought to myself, this is strange. Jordan hasn't called yet to spoil my lunch with yet another urgent request. Don't worry, I can grumble and search at the same time. Fred, you may not have noticed, but I have Frank Shim from Singapore on the conference. Apologies, Mr. Shim. Of course. We're trying to figure out if there is any link between the identity scandal and a high volume of suspicious transactions going back and forth from my bank to William Carrera. Hmm. Jordan, looks like there was an audited IM conversation between Peter Holt and Charlotte Scott in San Jose. There is reference to a William Carrera here. Funny thing is that a Charlotte Scott has been bugging me about how to get hold of backup tapes all day. I talked to those two just moments ago. I told her not to worry about that. Maybe you need to start worrying about her. And why those two are talking about a William Carrera. Fred, I sent you a credit card application we flagged a couple of hours ago. I'd like to know who issued that application. Oh. I almost forgot. You're going to love this. I pulled up the application record and noticed that it had been updated after it was flagged. Nothing looked unusual, but I went back to see how it looked this morning, and the application was issued by Charlotte Scott. She tried to cover her tracks. So, Robert, I'd like you to take a close look at the video of William Carrera and tell me if he looks familiar. 
I don't know William Carrera, but the gentleman in this video is Peter Holt. I trained him. He sat next to me for two years before he left for California. Where did you get this video? This is a surveillance tape from an ATM in Panama. Did you ever hear Peter Holt referred to as William Carrera? Never. And all that time, he was stealing the identities of our customers. It's amazing. I didn't suspect a thing. So, now we know who stole Mark Drake. Peter and a Charlotte Scott. She approved the credit cards, then he laundered the credit card money using the stolen identities. It seems, Robert, that you knew Mark Drake better than the man you sat next to for two years. Maybe I'll go around and pay Mr. Drake a visit.